Hey everyone, welcome. My name is Michael Deutsch, the brand ambassador for My Manager Software. This is my first PM Expo, and I'm very excited to share with you some techniques that will help you future-proof your projects. The need to future-proof a project may not need too much explanation why this is so critical with the coronavirus wreaking havoc around the world, but that's just one incident to consider when planning projects. And depending on your project, its size, your industry, and its context, this is an essential part to consider, possibly for your project or all of your projects. We'll look at how to create a post-mortem before your project starts as part of your planning process using two powerful techniques, mind mapping and reverse brainstorming, where the goal is to identify all the potential threats, evaluate them, and develop plans to counter them when necessary. Here's a little bit more about me and what brings me here today. First, let me say Xin Chao, hello from Hanoi, Vietnam. It looks like I'm going to ride out the corona storm here. Now, for my professional background, projects have always been a part of my career. I started work eons ago as a supply chain management consultant for Pricewaterhouse, a few years before it became PwC. After close to a decade of consulting projects, I shifted my focus from consulting to product management and product marketing. Fast forward even more, a couple of years or decades, I was last leading the product development organization for two different product families under the Corel portfolio, my manager being one of them. I was responsible for dozens of product launches for desktop, mobile, and SaaS applications. And over that time, I've made probably every mistake in the book and collected some very valuable lessons along the way. If you're not familiar with the role of product management, it definitely overlaps with project management. We're also on the hook to deliver on time, on budget, and with quality. Product managers are responsible for defining the product releases, the goals and scope of each project, so that the organization can stay ahead of an evolving marketplace, definitely ahead of the competition, and meet the needs of our customers and attract new prospects. We have to keep in mind the company's financial goals and align with the strategy and deal with any and all issues that arise during the course of a project. All of this has brought me profound appreciation for partnering with project managers who help not only track what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis, but also anticipate what's around the corner. Project managers deserve huge accolades because of all of that, along with the dozens of hats that they wear, from being a coach and motivational speaker to being a problem solver and a diplomat. The roles and hats switch daily, maybe hourly or even more frequently. But today, we're going to dive in deeper to the last one listed, the soothsayer. <laughs> I like that word. I chose it maybe because it's so uncommon, but it stands out. And what I'm talking about is your ability to see into the future. You guys are like prophets. It isn't enough to build out a project plan with a work breakdown structure and manage the critical path to ensure timely delivery. You also have to be one step ahead, ensuring that everyone is ready for the unexpected that's just lurking around the corner and have plans ready to handle any potential threat. You have to have and build the tools necessary to monitor and implement changes to deal with any situation that arises. So my hat tip to all of you, this is not an easy role. So this brings me to the first point of the session, which is planning for the new norm. And that new norm we're all experiencing and its disruption. Some of these areas listed here may be obvious, but they're all worth mentioning. Because a month or so ago, who among us would have predicted we'd all be taking part of the world's largest work from home experiment in response to the, to the coronavirus. It's extraordinary, it's heartbreaking, and we are living in extraordinary times. Beyond the current crisis though, and in work in general, I'm pretty sure that, that many will agree the pace of change and the frequency of disruptions are accelerating. Look at the environment. Forest fires seem to be the new norm. Violent storms, power outages, floods, people being displaced. These are just a few of the environmental disruptions we see in the news, but they are impacting projects around the globe. And there's more. The political landscape feels volatile, which has also had an impact on regulatory change. The financial world is alternating on a daily basis right now between boom and bust. How will that impact your projects? Will the trade wars disrupt your supply chain? How will that impact your projects? And it's not all alarming. But there are powerful changes at, at play. Look at technology. Technology is evolving and changing the landscape of how we work and live. New technologies like AI, the Internet of Things, voice interfaces, are just a few examples. 
and how will that affect how you work and collaborate? Speaking of change and disruption, an interesting anecdote. The Institute for the Future and Dell Technologies predicted that by 2030, 85% of the jobs haven't even been invented yet. When was the last time something like that has occurred? The Industrial Revolution? The reality is, everything is changing, or may potentially change. Your organization, your staff, your goals, your strategy, the competition, the marketplace, and the rules that govern it. Nothing is sacred anymore. So how do you approach identifying and evaluating the potential threats and opportunities that lie ahead? In my first draft, I added this quote from Ben Franklin, but later learned due to some fact-checking and a Yale database that good old Ben never said this or wrote this. However, it's a good one. That failing to prepare is preparing to fail. And similar to another one that I hold near and dear, which is Begin with the End in Mind by Covey. But preparation is usually focused on the happy path, the critical path to completing the project. What about the shadow side of preparation, the dark side? Let's explore together the benefits and value of looking at the path of failure. As we go there, I'm going to share the two techniques that used together will help you gain a greater perspective and ability to peer into the future, to become the soothsayer, identifying all the potential risks and obstacles that block your path to success. The first technique is mind mapping. A mind map is a visual representation of your thoughts, ideas, information, or even data. It usually centers around a common theme and radiates outwards, branching off into major ideas that are related to the central theme and connected to it with lines, creating a visual hierarchical structure of ideas. Chuck Frey of the Mind Mapping Software blog regularly surveys his global readers for the key benefits of mind mapping in both business and personal life. You'll see here some of the top results, which remain fairly consistent year over year. From my own experience, mapping helps you see the big picture and gives you the ability to easily drill down into details as needed. And as a result of seeing the big picture, you gain greater clarity, which is actually cathartic when you consider the chaos that surrounds us on a day-to-day -day basis, the inundation of emails, requests, texts, and demand for our time, attention, and presence. It helps you synthesize all that information that's in your head and across all the different apps and communications. Mind maps have many applications, and some of the most common beyond brainstorming and simply organizing your thoughts are for planning, both strategically and for projects. So let's review quickly how a mind map is created. You start with a central idea or theme, and then you branch out and surround your theme with other key ideas, connecting everything with lines. Each one of those key ideas might be further broken out into greater detail, again, connecting them together visually using lines. You can keep going deeper and deeper into details until you have fully ex explored your theme. The second technique is reverse brainstorming. It builds on our innate ability to see problems more easily than solutions, and it's a powerful technique to use for project planning and risk management. A normal brainstorming question may ask something like, how can we complete this project successfully or make it a wild success? While reverse brainstorming turns, turns that all around and asks, what are all the different ways that could kill this project or make it a dismal failure? Reverse brainstorming is actually a lot of fun. And you'll be surprised how much easier it is to come up with ideas as compared to regular brainstorming. And when you engage with team members that bring in different perspectives, you'll find it a powerful way to reveal and surface hidden threats. And it's also worthy to note the technique can be a powerful way to transform a gripe session into something much more productive. Here's how it's done. The first step is similar to brainstorming in that you must identify the problem. Next, you reverse the problem and form it into a question. Then the brainstorming begins. You and your team can identify all the ways to satisfy the reverse of the problem. For instance, what are all the ways your project can fail? For the purposes of project planning, you can throw in another step, which is to evaluate each threat, rating its likelihood to occur, the probability it's going to happen, severity or impact, and its overall priority. Finally, you reverse the thinking once again and brainstorm all the ways you can prevent or mitigate the prioritized threats. When you marry these two powerful techniques together, you'll have a greater ability to look into the future, see any potential threats that lie ahead, and develop approaches to handle them with ease. So let's dive into Mind Manager and take a look at an interactive mind map that, that will walk you through the project postmortem 
or the pre-postmortem, and walk through the reverse brainstorming technique. Step one, as I mentioned, you identify the problem. What are you trying to solve for? In this case, how to successfully complete your project. Step two is to ask, how can I reverse step one and turn it into a question? Like, what are all the ways and things that can happen that would kill our project? This is where the fun begins, where you can get creative, think outside the box, dig up past experiences, and explore all the things that can go wrong. Sort of like Murphy's Law on steroids. Step three, this is where you can dig in deeper and ask questions to explore each of the potential threats. Like what were the warning signs? How did they reveal themselves? And what could we have been tracking to detect it sooner? Step four analyzes each threat to discover the likelihood, the probability, the severity, impact, and the overall priority. And in the final step, you look at each threat and ask, what could you do differently? What, would, what could you do to mitigate the risk, resolve it completely, transfer it, or whether or not you can simply ignore it as it's inconsequential? So let's jump to a new map to see it at work. In this first branch, I've included seven brainstorming tips from the design firm IDEO. The first tip is to always defer judgment. Like improv, you never say no during the brainstorming. Try saying yes, and what else, or how else, where else, etc. The goal is to keep the ideas flowing. The next step is to encourage wild ideas. Think outside the box. You can also build on each other's ideas. It's important to stay focused on the topic and maintain one conversation at a time. Be visual, I love that one. And finally, you'll focus on quantity during brainstorming, not quality. You get to qualify everything at a later stage, as I mentioned. So you open up the floodgates and let the ideas flow. So the first step, identify the problem. In this case, I've prepared it already and added the question, how do we make the project a success? Or how do you make it a wild success? As we learned earlier, the next step is to reverse it and ask, how can we make the project fail or fail miserably? So let's brainstorm. Let's enter in some potential threats, or maybe real ones at this point. Global pandemic? Global recession? I'm going to skip ahead and enter in a few more examples. Okay. Now let's take the step of prioritizing these threats. As I mentioned earlier, using tags to mark up each one with a rating for severity or likelihood or probability of occurring, you can use visual icons or tags to mark up any of these. Mark up, for instance, which ones are priority one, priority two, or priority three. And then you can tag the others as low, medium, or high probability, or low, medium, or high severity. What is their impact? Now it's easy to enter in additional information by hitting the enter key or insert keys. You can expand or collapse any of the branches to focus on the big picture or drill into all the details. And you can easily just drag and drop topics with ease to reorganize them so they make more sense. Pick it up, drop it off in a new location. It's as easy as that. And once everything is tagged and categorized, you can also use filters. In this instance, I'll use a quick filter to focus my attention on all the priority one threats. The final step is to develop your risk management plans. Will you mitigate the risk? Resolve and prevent it? What could you do if there was a global pandemic? And follow this process by reviewing all the prioritized threats and building out your plans. So to wrap this up, we've been presented with a harsh new reality, a wake-up call, and a reminder that our projects and all of us need to be more resilient. And it's us, up to us to develop the skills to foresee the issues that may lie ahead and plan for them accordingly. So I wish you personally and professionally both safety and success. That's all the time I have today for the PM Expo. I truly hope that I've been able to inspire some exciting and new ways to future-proof your projects. And if so, I'd love for you to join me for a full one hour length webinar in April. It will be an opportunity to dive in deeper into mind mapping and reverse brainstorming, as well as have some live questions and answers. It's free to join, and you can do so by going to the URL on the screen here, mindmanager.com slash or forward slash sign dash me dash up and click on the webinar and event invitations. Thanks a lot. Take care, everyone. Be safe.